In this brief video, I'll be reviewing some recommended additional resources you might want to consider when learning EKG interpretation. Although I think my course here on YouTube provides an excellent foundation for learning EKGs, it's not the only source you'll need. It's also important to locate many example EKGs on which you can practice your knowledge. In addition, there may be times when it's advantageous to have a printed resource available for you to carry around on the wards or in clinic, and some people just prefer learning from a printed format. Unfortunately, there are literally dozens of EKG textbooks on the market ranging in quality from excellent to absolutely terrible, and it can be difficult for the novice to assess where a book falls on the spectrum. There is almost no relationship between the quality of the book and its popularity, so don't think that you can simply use the Amazon sales ranking as a guide. While no book out there is perfect, and I'd love to someday get around to writing my own EKG text, in the meantime, let me discuss those four books which are most worth borrowing or purchasing. My first recommendation is this one, The Only EKG Book You'll Ever Need by Malcolm Thaler. This is the all-around best choice for the vast majority of medical, nursing, and paramedic students. What makes it so good? First, it starts at the very beginning, assuming absolutely no prior knowledge of EKGs and only the most basic knowledge of cardiac physiology. Second, the writing is clear and concise. Combined with its relatively short length, the entire book can easily be tackled in a weekend. Next, most of the diagrams are equally clear and the overall formatting of the book is reasonably good. Finally, there is a decent and brief summary chapter at the very end. What are this book's limitations? For some trainees, particularly health staff in internal medicine, anesthesia, and emergency medicine, it will be insufficient as a sole resource for learning EKGs. It just doesn't go into enough depth with certain topics, such as advanced arrhythmias. Second, in my opinion, it's not 100% accurate. For example, as with many other books, it describes the normal QRS axis as 0 to positive 90 degrees, while most cardiologists usually cite negative 30 to positive 90 as the normal range. Finally, the small collection of examples at the end are atrocious. It's particularly bizarre that the scale of the waveforms and the grid lines appear to be completely different, such that many of the rhythms appear to be at rates greater than 300 beats a minute. Despite these shortcomings, however, this is an excellent introductory text. Uh, next up is this one, A Practical Guide to ECG Interpretation by Ken Grauer. This was my textbook of choice when I was a student, and also that of my wife, who is now a Stanford electrophysiologist. As compared to the last book, there is a little less foundational material on the physiology related to the EKG, but there is much more about everything else. The good news about this is A Practical Guide to ECG Interpretation is a more appropriate book for trainees anticipating an unusually high volume of EKG reading during their careers. The downside is that it's 500 pages in smaller print will take much longer to finish. Also, compared to the only EKG book you'll ever need, the example tracings are a little bit better once you get past the blue grid lines. However, the figures and tables are probably not quite as good. Overall, this is my favorite EKG text. Uh, you may wonder why I didn't start off talking about this one. It's because, unfortunately, it's been out of print for years. Uh, and in my conversations with both the author and the original publisher, uh, it kind of unfortunately seems unlikely to be re reissued in the near future. So you might ask, uh, is it worth bu uh, buying a used copy on eBay, which runs about 60 to $70 or so? Um, I love learning about EKGs, so I personally think so. But for those who strongly prefer their books new or from an actual bookstore, uh, this one may not be an option. The good news is that this book's author has been self-publishing a whole collection of new titles. Uh, most relevant to this discussion are the pocketbooks. In particular, um, this one here is called ECG Pocket Brain. Uh, this will fit into your white coat pocket, but its 260 pages are, are packed with information. Uh, in fact, it probably has the highest amount of helpful information per page of any EKG resource I've come across and almost of any resource at all um, that I've seen. Uh, in any field. Uh, one of my students referred to its outstanding clinical pearl to page ratio. So what are its downsides? Well, one of its strengths is also its weakness. By compacting so much information into such a physically small book, the trade-off is that it's difficult to read. 
Uh, the text and figures are uh, all kind of crammed in on the page, uh, and it all comes across more as a reference guide than an actual textbook. Um, along the same lines, the included, uh, the included sample tracings are fewer in number and are much smaller, such that some are hard to see, especially things like P-wave uh, abnormalities um, and, and the, uh, the like. Uh, for some trainees, this trade-off of size and readability may be worth it. For others, maybe not. Uh, but it's important to know that this book is available as an ebook, uh, which does reduce much of the readability problem. The final book to mention is Marriott's Practical Electrocardiography, now in its 11th edition, and whose writing is currently led by Galen Wagner, the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Electrocardiography. Although it's technically an introductory EKG text, it's substantially more advanced and thorough than any of the others I've mentioned and it will be intimidating to most trainees who happen to page through it. However, this thoroughness is its major advantage. There are things discussed in here that you won't find in any other EKG textbook. Unfortunately, there are also things in there that are of questionable relevance to the practice of clinical medicine. Some sections in the chapters on ischemia and infarction seem particularly esoteric. And I'm also not a huge fan of the book's final chapter on a systematic approach to the diagnosis of arrhythmias, which spends more time philosophizing than it does providing practical advice. However, uh, Marriott and Wagner's book provides an otherwise great explanation of advanced rhythm issues along with pacemakers. It does come with a uh, DVD, which is supposed to have example tracings and some helpful animations, but which I personally found to be very underwhelming. Overall, the book is too long, too advanced, and too demanding of the reader for the overwhelming majority of medical trainees. There are also no practice EKGs included in the book itself. However, for students and medical health staff considering a career in cardiology or those who just love EKGs, it's definitely worth a look. In addition to textbooks and of course this YouTube channel, another resource for EKG learning to consider are websites. I won't discuss these in any detail, but here are four to consider looking at. First is the ECG section of the outstanding Australian-based medical education website, Life in the Fast Lane. This website, uh, or this EKG section of this website in particular, uh, is short on text and high on examples and tables. This means it's probably not robust enough to serve as a one-stop resource for learning EKGs, but it's a great place to look up a specific topic quickly. I also love its simplicity and easy-to-navigate organization. Next is ECGpedia, which is essentially a wiki dedicated solely to EKGs. As with most wikis, this one sometimes feels very comprehensive and awesome, and other times feels incomplete and lacking the focus a single author would provide. Ken Grauer uh, has an ECG blog in which he uses uh, example tracings to present much of the material included in his pocketbooks, uh, particularly uh, the pocket brain. And finally is Dr. Smith's ECG blog, which is an enormous collection of sample EKGs with clinical histories and analyses. These cases are of great learning value, but are aimed more at clinicians already quite skilled in EKG interpretation and who are trying to master advanced details. As much as I like his site, I think most beginners will feel overwhelmed by it. But if you're interested in challenging yourself, and, uh, or if you have some EKG interpretation uh, already under your belt, you should check it out. So that's it for my recommendations on some of the other resources out there for learning EKGs beyond my course here on YouTube. Uh, hopefully you'll find these to be helpful.